Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Sound Design Blog. I'm Michael Hoyer, and today we're going to be going into how to make a pre-show cue for theater that's going to not only loop, but also be able to fade out at any point. Now, before we get started, let's go ahead and pop down here to the workspace settings. Um, you'll sometimes hear me say preferences accidentally. But first, we're going to go into general, and then we're going to look at auto number new cues with increment. Uh, personally, I always have that off just because when you start doing groups and things, your numbers get a little crazy, and they get huge quickly. And I'm not a big fan of that. I really prefer to just have my numbers picked out before I even start touching QLab. Um, and that just that's good paperwork in the first place. So let's go ahead and get started to make a group cue. All you have to do is hit Command-0, and that makes a group cue. So looking at this, we see that there is no number on it. Let's go ahead, add a number to it. Um, I'm going to go with 0.5. Um, to do that, you can also just hit N, and that'll highlight that same spot, and you can type in 0.5. Uh, to change the name on that guy, let's go ahead and hit Q. Uh, notice, too, I hit Q. This is labeled Q. That was a good thought process for them. But let's go ahead and rename it pre-show music, and you'll see why we do this a little bit later. Uh, now we need some cues to put into our pre-show music. I'm going to go ahead and just use these transitions from a show I did a couple years back. It was A Devil Inside by David Lindsay, a bear. Um, did it at UMKC. Um, and actually, that was a good point to look at. For some reason, the 10 has been throwing itself up here with the 1 on that. But when you take a cue and you drag it into the space, if you put it into the main workspace area, it lights up the whole box with that blue. You see the blue that's highlighting where you're putting it? Well, if you put it into the group, it'll highlight the group, and then you know that it's going in. Uh, the line also works internally within it, so you can see where you're dropping it. But we're going to put it at the end, so it goes in sequential order. Um, now to make this loop, what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and grab a start cue and we're going to put that right at the bottom of the group. Notice it gave it a red X. It, it says a cue in the group is broken. That's because we haven't told the start cue what to do yet. And it tells you that. And again, this is a really good practice. If there is a red X in cue lab, just put your mouse over it. It'll tell you what's going on, which is a wonderful feature and helps speed up your troubleshooting. So all we need to do is take the first cue in the group and make it the target of the start cue. So now this is targeting start act one, scene one, wave, which is right up there. Um, so if we were to fire the cue at the moment, what it would do is just simply go into the group and it would play this first cue. Not exactly what we want. So what we need to do is set up a bunch of auto follows. To do that, you can hit C, and that'll change over here what your follows are doing. You could also go ahead and just click twice over there to make the auto follow symbol. Otherwise, too, you can go into the queue and change it in the continue area to auto follow. I'm totally fine with using C. I really believe in making key commands. Notice I'm just hitting down to go through the group, but learning key commands, things go faster. So right now, the way this is set up, the cue is going to fire, and it's going to enter into our group. Um, because there is nowhere for it to stop in the group, there is no cue to sit on, it's going ahead and it is switching ahead and going outside the group. Now, if you were to click on this, and we're going to let this play out real quick just to illustrate that this is auto-following right now. There, see, it auto-followed. So let's go ahead and stop it. You can hit escape. That'll give it a five second fade out. If you hit escape twice, it actually just panics it off and it just snaps it off right away. But let's look at group here. And we're gonna look at the mode. And the mode determines how the group will behave. Right now we have it to go start first child, enter group. So you would think that it would start, like go into the group and stop down here on the start queue. It doesn't, it actually will skip ahead and go outside the queue. Um, it's a good way actually to investigate if your cue's broken or not, like if it is going to actually loop through. Cause say that was off. 
what it's going to do now is start first child, enter into the group. It'll stop in the middle of the group. And you know, oh my gosh, that wasn't actually set up correctly. What a bummer. But when it is working correctly and you do have your mode as start first child, enter into group, it's going to snap to the outside of the group. Um, when you know it's working though, I personally like to put it on start first child, go to next queue. Because realistically, that is what we're doing. Um, so looking at this though, you notice that I only numbered one of these. Reason being, once the show's actually running, I'm going to shut that group so that all we see is that 0.5 and that's all that's going to matter. Oftentimes, I'll use groups to just simplify my workspace. Um, and it, it's not to be unfair to operators, really, but the less they have to complicate the workspace, to confuse them, to open up an opportunity for error, the better. So it's best to keep your organization up so that they don't have as many opportunities for something to go wrong. Not saying that it would, but we just want to be safe about it. And heck, it looks sleeker this way anyway. So right now, we have an infinitely looping pre-show. And you might be wondering, well, why do we want it to loop infinitely? I mean, aren't we going to shut it off? Well, even with 45 minutes of music, you really never know what's going to happen. If there's going to be a catastrophic failure in lighting or something's going to happen backstage that they need to deal with, you want your music to be able to just loop on itself. Even with 45 minutes, which is 15 minutes more than you typically need, you're going to want that backup plan just in case. Who knows? But it's a good practice to get into. But let's go ahead. Right now, we have the looping pre-show music group queue. So to make it fadeable, we're going to make a fade queue, which is just command six. And that made our fade queue, and it's outside of the group, which is fantastic. And we're going to take the whole group, and we're just going to drag it to it. So now the target is the entire group. So we have to just set our fade now. And notice I'm just going into levels, and I'm going to click on the master and take it all the way down to infinite. And I'm going to stop the target when done. Now, you'll notice that the action is five seconds. When it's action, it's actually talking about the duration. And five seconds is a little abrupt for this situation. Typically, when we're taking out our pre-show music, it's a much more gradual fade. So we want to make something that's going to be a little smoother. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit D. And that goes to duration. D, duration. They were smart about it. Um, and we're going to switch that to 10 seconds and we're just going to hit enter. So now it'll be a 10 second fade going all the way out. I checked stop target when done for a very specific reason. And you'll notice too, when I click that off, it just says fade pre-show music. When it's on, it says fade and stop pre-show music. If I didn't have that checked, the pre-show music would fade all the way down and you wouldn't hear it but it would still be playing in the background for the entire show, sucking up a bunch of CPU that you don't really want to give up. So go ahead and just get in the habit of fade and stop. This is true with projection cues that you don't want to see. You need to stop them. Otherwise, they just sit there in the background and they pile up, and that's no fun. But anyway, let's go ahead and give this a number. And again, you could have hit N. Notice number. N, Q, Q, it's beautiful. But let's go ahead and label it one. And there you go. You have a working pre-show music loop that can be faded. So let's go ahead and start this out. It's playing, lights go to half, your stage manager calls, sound cue one, go. You fire it, no matter where it is, in the group, it'll start fading it. And looking at it, you'll see that snapped off. And that's beautiful. That's exactly what we want. So now you have a working, looping, pre-show music group queue. What else can this be used for? You might be wondering. Uh, yes, it is useful as pre-show music, but you can actually use this exact same technique to make a looping ambience. Like say that your scene is in a forest and you don't want to play 20 minutes or 
<laughs> I make that sound so off, 20 minutes. But you don't want to play like, I don't know, a 45-minute queue of something that could just as easily be made with a loop and like five-minute clips. So a good technique is do basically this exact same thing. Set up, you know, you could do like five cues. They can even be like the same cues and just stagger them a bunch. But make it so that it loops on itself and that it, it's not going to bump into its tail end. And it'll work the exact same way, and it'll be constantly looping, and it'll constantly be different because it won't time out the same, which is very Cajun. But it won't time out the same, allowing you a really diverse ambience that's going to be perfect and keep going as long as you need it, no matter what happens, and it'll be there. And yeah, just a really, really useful cue. So go ahead and put that in your back pocket too, now that you can make a pre-show music group Q, and know that you're just a better designer for it. So, yeah, guys, that's basically what's going on here. Um, thanks again for checking it out. As always, tune in next week. Check in on our wonderful website, thesounddesignblog.com. We have new articles up every week, new videos as well. You can check out our YouTube, again, the Sound Design Blog. Um, otherwise, our Facebook page too, which is just facebook.com slash the sound design blog. Uh, but definitely check us out. Feel free to contribute. We're totally open to new ideas, new questions. Anytime you get stumped on something and you're just curious about it, even if that's just like, what's a good sound MFA program or anything like that, feel free to go to my pick my brain um, tab on the website and I'll happily answer any of those kinds of questions for you. So yeah, thanks again for tuning in, and I'll see you next week.